Welcome back to the final part of the show where it's all about food, glorious food. Ashling Larkin is on standby from her kitchen. So Ashling, what are you making for us? Hi guys, we are doing pasta this evening, really summery dish. So we're gonna do a gorgeous creamy ghost cheese, rosemary and courgette pasta. And then we're adding some summer peas and salmon to it as well. So it's really delish. So I'm just gonna start off, right? I'll show you what I have in my pan. I have half a teaspoon of oil, half a teaspoon of butter, and I'm putting in some shallots. So I've got two small shallots, and into that I'm going to put some garlic, okay? So I've got some lovely garlic, and I wanna show you the cloves of garlic, actually. These are single cloves, so they're really big, but it just means you have to only peel one clove, as oh, opposed right. to, because that's what puts people off, is like peeling loads and loads of cloves of garlic. So that's really handy. So I'm gonna put my garlic in there, I'm gonna put my onions in there, Next up, I'm going to put my fresh rosemary. Now, rosemary is traditionally a herb that we would kind of use much more kind of wintertime. It's more woody and it goes with kind of dark meats and stuff. But actually, it's lovely with ingredients like courgettes and goat's cheese. It goes really, really nicely. So what I've done is I've chopped it up really finely and I'm putting it in there. Now, you do need to chop it up finely. The other alternative is you could just get big sprigs and lay the sprigs in and infuse the rosemary into the creamy sauce. And then just before you serve it, pop Take these it out. out. Okay. Yeah, so that works really well as well. Okay, so I'm gonna put those in, cook those up. And then to make the sauce, we are going to put in some goat's cheese. So I've got some lovely soft Irish goat's cheese. And I'm just gonna put that in. And again, we're trying to get in all those summer vibes. Pasta can kind of be kind of a heavy dish sometimes. So we wanna like lighten it up and make it, make it summery. Says so she now who's coming with cream. But bear with me with the cream, right? <laughs> bear with me with the cream. <laughs> I'll explain all that to you. Oh, I'm there in a cream of smoke. And pasta. What a dip. That's fine oh, on its totally. own. I love the way she pepper. catches herself straight away. Just bear with me, lads. Just bear with me. Okay, yeah, we're with yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know me, right? One step closer to healthy. So what we have done is I have used normally a recipe like this you'd use about 200 250 mils like the small carton of cream and mm. um, but what i've done is i'm using 150 ml of cream you could use half that creme fraiche which would be really lovely as well um but so technically we're using half the cream so what are we doing if we're only using half the cream i have saved some of the pasta water okay so this is the really starchy pasta water and i'm just adding that in so you're getting all of those all of the richness and the thickness from the starch mm. and that's thickening it up so you've half essentially the calories half the saturated fat but you're still getting that really gorgeous creamy creamy texture i'm just going to let that sit away that's going to bubble it's going to creamy up it's going to form the sauce and i want to show you the pasta right so this is there's tons of pasta on the market now right and we don't always have to stick to the traditional one this is a chickpea pasta oh okay, okay. Fine. yes now yeah. why would you bother why would you bother says you let me tell you why <laughs> Um, there's loads of reasons and actually genuinely right first things first if it wasn't as nice as regular pasta I wouldn't bother yeah. with it I just enjoy the real pasta but actually I would give it kind of 8 out of 10 versus real pasta 10 out of 10 but this one is lovely it's bronze dye which means that what they've done is when they extrude or shape the pasta they use a bronze cutter as opposed to like a plastic one yeah. so you get a kind of a rougher texture on the outside it holds onto the sauce and it's a much nicer mouthfeel Second reason, and most important reason, nutrition-wise, mm. it has, on average, about four times more fiber and four times more protein than regular pasta, and it's gluten-free. So that kind of okay. compensates for the bit of cream that's in there. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. No, but that's, the other lovely. But that's it's kind of good to see the alternatives for our yeah. diets. We started using cauliflower rice recently, and it's really nice. <gasps> it I, is. Yeah. Like I really, no, I really is. like it. Once you flavor it up, I think if you can put like coriander in it, yeah. and a bit of chili, something like that, it is, it's lovely. It is, and it's nice to see those alternatives. And I think particularly gluten-free, like so many people for so long have struggled gluten-free wise. And actually that chickpea pasta is really, really nice. And it takes nine minutes to cook as opposed to before whole wheat pastas used to take about 25 minutes yeah. to cook. It was a killer. So for nine minutes, it's great. So guys, what I have here is my courgette, right? I literally have like a, a, a vegetable peeler and I'm just peeling it into ribbons and I'm putting that into the sauce. I have my pasta that's already cooked. So I'm just gonna pop this in here. And again, you could always mix, like even if you didn't wanna go with the chickpea, you could mix whole grain, half white, half whole grain. Give that a little stir around. And then I'm gonna pop in my peas 
and a little bit of lemon zest. And the lemon zest just adds this amazing, amazing zing. Mm. Now, if you don't have peas from your garden, because as I said, I have about four pods that are ready to go right now. <laughs> <laughs> I did have to get some um, some beautiful frozen petit pois to kind of bulk it up a little yeah. bit. You know, I, I didn't have quite enough right now. Ashley, can um, I ask I you about the, about the pasta, by the way? Is yeah. that from a health food shop? No, you know what, Moran, it's not. And that's the thing. Before those kind of pastas were strictly kind of of the health food shop ilk, yeah. these are all supermarkets. Okay. Anything I use is from your regular supermarket aisle now, and they're all available in the supermarket. And there's a couple of lovely brands that are kind of leaders at the moment, and they're doing a really, they're, they're high quality. They okay. really are. They've come a long way, those kind of products. You know, they're gorgeous. I want to try that. So guys, this is it. It's so incredibly delicious. The goat's cheese has melted. The little peas are gone in. I'm going to finish it, like I said, with just that little bit of freshness from the lemon zest and lemon zest and courgettes and peas. And like, if you know, I talk about the flexitarian style lifestyle, which is yeah. kind of just a little bit less meat, slightly more fruit and veg. Like you don't have to have the salmon in this. You could, I mean, on its own. And genuinely, when I developed it first, I developed it on its own without any meat in it. And it's, it's just, it's so beautiful on its own. But if you did want to put in, like the salmon works really well, prawns would work really nicely mm. in it as well. Okay, okay. So I'm going to plate this up and then a final flourish of Parmesan on top as well. Oh, lovely. This sounds gorgeous. I mean, last week you were here and you were making your smashed up burgers and rather than regular cheese, you put goat's cheese on top with balsamic vinegar instead yeah. of the ketchup. They were amazing. So goat's cheese with anything, I think. It's gonna work. Oh, it's always gonna work. Absolutely. It's lovely. It's really creamy, and it is. It just it has quite a subtle flavour for somebody who's not maybe you know a big lover of cheese, but it mm. it is. It's lovely, and we've amazing Irish producers as well of goat's cheese. So we should celebrate our Irish producers as when we can. I think. Yeah, exactly. What Mary was talking about uh, exactly. a little bit earlier on. When you're going into the supermarket now, are you kind of are you researching beforehand, going how I can find alternatives, or are you just kind of browsing, going I'm going to give that a go because. Oh, I browse. Like, you've no idea how lockdown affected me. Browsing in the supermarket is one of my favourite hobbies. I adore it. I could spend hours in the supermarket. Like, online supermarket shopping is definitely not for me. So, no, I browse. I browse and I look. And it's about, I suppose, reading the labels and just starting to understand, OK, well, how much fibre do I actually need? And what do I need fibre for? And why is protein better for me? So, obviously, it's going to keep you fuller for longer. Yeah. You're not going to get that heavy carb feeling. So, there's loads of, like, really good reasons to look for alternatives that... As I said, they're not going to, you're not going to lose out on flavor. And I would never give you a recipe that would make you lose out on flavor. This tastes absolutely amazing. But it's just you're getting the health benefit of having something that has more fiber and more protein in it. Okay, it looks amazing. Oh, guys, look how is. good is that? It's gorgeous. Mm. So you've got the creaminess. And like I said, creme fraiche will work really, really nice. A low fat sour cream will work really, really nice. But you're using half the cream and then you're using your pasta water to thicken up that lovely sauce. So it's just absolutely delish. I have loved what you've cooked. I've also loved looking at your back garden. It looks absolutely <laughs> amazing. But, but it's without its peas now. It's so just it's, normally we're there. She's, she's facing the, the other way. I love it. Ashling Larkin, thank you so Thanks much for joining us tonight. You're as so always. welcome, guys. Okay. Uh,